that might be a whiting, hopefully. It's a horse, I think. Yeah, it's a cracker. Get the net. Good fish. Yeah, nice whiting. G'day guys, Wool Kitchen here. Welcome back to another video and thank you so much for joining us. Now, as you can see, it is an absolutely beautiful day here on the Gold Coast, nice and sunny, and we are up on the sand flats chasing a feed of whiting. So, fingers crossed we can catch a few for you and give you plenty of tips along the way to come out and do this yourself. Now, if you've seen my reef videos recently, you might have seen that we've been using click sinkers and testing them out, and they've been working wonders. So today we've got the lighter version of the click sinkers. These are only 10 grams, and we're testing them up here in the shallows for whiting. We're impressed so far, and you'll see throughout the video how they're going. A really nice guy named Oppet came up to say g'day to us when we were pumping our yabbies. So Oppet, if you're watching, thank you, mate. Really nice guy, and I hope you got a few whiting today. If you ever see us on the water, guys, feel free to come up and say g'day. We don't bite. Hopefully the fish do, though. So let's get out there and see if we can get a few. As you can see here, it didn't take long to start getting a few bites after we anchored in just over a metre of water. Yeah. Nice one to start off. First cast. Hold this while I catch one. Just point it at me though. Hopefully it's still there. I think I've just on Arsenal got it. I was glad to see the click sinkers working just as well for us in the estuaries as they had for us out on the reef. It was great to get a couple of legal fish straight away, but pretty soon some vessel owners started showing some poor etiquette driving right over our lines as you're about to see. I was just slowly winding in guys. I got a bite just at the back of the boat here, so hopefully it takes it. Got him. See how quickly I caught. Yeah, nice whiting. You gotta be kidding me, eh? Well, guys, don't do what they just did. Both of those jet skis. This is a sandbank, so there's no need for them to come in behind right where we're casting. No need to come that close to us in the first place when we're anchored. But anyway, that's another nice whiting, and Matt's on too. Yep, lift him, he's, oh, he's just under. Just so clean up here down. on the nice shallow sand flats, nice salty clean water, beautiful. All right, I just thought I'd jump in here quickly, guys, to let you know that I'm not just including this footage to sit here and have a whinge. There is a couple of reasons why I've left that in the video. Now, the first one of those is actually uh, to use it as a lesson for people that may be new to boating or new to fishing. Where you can see us fishing is in a metre of water up on a shallow sand flat. We are way out of the channel and way out of the way of any other boats. So there's no need for any boats or jet skis to be flying up in behind us where they are for starters. But either way, no matter what it is, whether there's a boat driving, uh, whether they're anchored having lunch, whether they're anchored having a swim, whatever it may be, the polite thing to do is just to give people space out on the water and steer clear of them. This is especially true when a boat is fishing. You don't want to be driving over where they're fishing or especially over their lines like what these people are doing in the video. And you just want to give them plenty of space. Um, you don't want to spook their fish or the area that they're fishing. Now the second reason that I wanted to share this footage is because I think it's still amazing that even with the hustle and bustle of the Gold Coast and, and such a busy waterway with boats driving straight over the school of fish, we continue to catch them. Even if they went off the bite for a couple of minutes, they'd come back on again. So it's amazing how fish can adapt to noise, especially in these busy waterways. So that's very interesting for you too. But anyway, take that as a lesson. I hope you have a laugh at the rest of the video and enjoy it and take a few chips away. So let's get back to the action. It's funny, we just stopped for a drink guys and our lines went loose and one must have eaten dads and we didn't even notice. Not real big. Not real big, but... Oh. He'll probably make it, he's nice and long. Yeah, he's in. So what we do guys, we'll measure them if we have to, that one's definitely legal. Um, then we really look after these fish, even though they're whiting, we give it a little brain spike and a bleed, so 
we let it bleed out in a bucket then we put it in an esky in an ice lorry so i'll show you that now quickly i've done it a few times but just for anyone that's new this is what we do so brain spikes just down between their eyes for a whiting then we're going to bleed them by going in behind their gills and just cutting that membrane and you'd be surprised how much blood actually comes out of such a small fish and we're going to put it in a bucket of water there just to bleed out for a couple of minutes and then we'll get it straight in the esky so it definitely pays to do that if you're fishing for whiting it makes them beautiful and clean this one took it a bit better so hopefully it's illegal whiting it's coming around here he looks like he's going a bit better He might be 23. It's illegal, not not a monster, but Let's see if I can get one. Dad's on fire. <laughs> Nothing like just giving people a little bit of space. So, there's another one there. A jet ski just went in behind us right as it hit, and Dad's just got another one here that would be illegal. Oh, yeah? No worries. Well, there you go. Double hookup on nice whiting. Cannot complain with that. And, guys, yes, Matt is here. He's just having a bit of a nap. <laughs> He's sleeping up the fish. Yeah, that one's going all right, too. Going around that way. Do you want a net or? That one hit hard. It's going better, isn't it? Yeah. Staying down like a good whiting. Yeah, yeah it is. It is. Nice, Dad. I was just about to release this undersized flathead here, and Dad got absolutely smashed by that whiting just then. Very nice. We'll bleed that one after I get rid of this little flatty. We'll get him back. Oop. See you, mate. And there we have it. Another nice wilding. So they're only up to around 25 sort of centimetres, 26 at the moment, but um, they're all absolutely delicious. I know that much. Now, at this stage of the day, the bite went a little bit quiet and the tide was starting to fill up over that sandbank. Now, what the wilding do, they're going to keep creeping up with that tide, pushing shallower and shallower. So when they went a little bit quiet where we were, we thought we'd move up a little bit shallower onto that bank and follow the fish and it paid off straight away. Oh, a better one? Yep. <laughs> That's a better one. That's a better one? Yeah. So there we go. That's a better one. I'll let Matt take the assist for that one because I cast his rod out and chucked it in the rod holder while he's having a sleep. But that is probably the best one so far. Put up a good fight around the boat there on the light spin gear. So a few more of those would be nice. Get ready guys, this one is an absolute doozy. Keep an eye on the boat in the background that ends up flying in behind us, hitting dad's line, and then realizing they're about to run into a sandbank. But yeah, nice fish. Well done dad. Get another one please. When you're on the water, you've got to pay attention to other boats all the time and whatever activities they're doing. Staying down? No. Yeah. Yeah. He's all right. Yeah. Swallowed it. Well done. Often, guys, when a lot of them are swallowing the hooks, it does mean that they are feeding. So when you're keeping them for a feed, you don't mind, mind that at all. Yeah, it's going all right. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, very nice. Well done, Dad. It's another nice one there. Yeah, well, that's right hit. Good fish. <laughs> good fish. Hang on. <laughs> that was buckled over. Ha <laughs> ha 
Not even that big for how it hit. It'll be legal though, oh, yeah, I think. Easy. easy. Oh well. Dad just got that nice one and Matt got one from the cabin. I'll just keep an eye on that. Oh, no, that's a bite. Yeah, that's a bite. I hope it's legal because it's swallowed it. They're feeding. Oh, you go, That's 23 and a half. Yep. There's another just legal one, guys, on Matt's rod in the rod holder. I can taste him already. So what's about to happen is really cool. Sadly, Dad caught an undersized whiting that was bleeding a little bit from the gills and after releasing it, it popped back up to the surface a couple of minutes later, just out the back of the boat. Now, before we knew it, a decent sized flathead came up and just really slowly and really casually just checked it out, grabbed it and just slowly swam away with it. Just by chance, I had the camera rolling, so I'll zoom in on it so you can see what's going on. Check this out. you caught before look it's just popped up again look it's eating your whiting no that's e that's eating your whiting that's Is a it? bigger flathead oh was it yeah that was a bigger flathead just ate that whiting <laughs> that one did yeah oh. <laughs> see how the whiting's gone now now it was almost time to go home but we thought we'd push right up into some ultra shallow water to have a couple of casts before we left and it paid off because I had the best fight of the day on a nice size whiting. That might be a whiting, hopefully. A bit more like one, I think. Oh, it's a good whiting. Yeah. It's all around my line. It's a horse, I think. Yeah, it's a cracker. Get the net. Holy... He's just a real big. <laughs> he went all under the boat, that one. That was only up right in shallow too. I'll hold that fish up for you in a second, but at the same time, my other rod got a bite. So what we just did guys is we moved up shallower. This one isn't as big as the last one. It's all right though. Yeah. Because we stopped getting them. So those whiting that we were getting with the tides moved up onto this bank. So we've pulled up the anchor and moved further with them and suddenly we got a couple. So when they go slow, sometimes they haven't gone off the bite. They've just moved up the bank a bit. Now that, guys, is an absolute cracker of a whiting. Wow, up in the shallows on light gear, that gave me some real curry around the motor and under the boat and other rods. Great fun. Great fun. So as I was saying before with these click sinkers, guys, they're light. It's light enough that the fish aren't feeling them when they're picking them up, but they're heavy enough that you can still absolutely launch them out. Look at that. You don't need to cast that far to be honest, but if you do want to, you can. So, yep, they're working well. There's another nice one, guys. That one wasn't far out the back of the boat. Once again, it ran off with the bait. Didn't really feel that click sinker and I had time to grab my rod and strike. So, very, very good. All right, well, that brings us to the end of the session, guys. We're just about to head back and clean those fish, but I just want to show you one more bonus of these click sinkers. So as you can see there, it's on our line, and it's as easy as just clipping it straight off, and then that won't be bashing against our rod as we head home. We can put that in the tackle box or in a bucket here to wash it, and uh, same with your other rods. If you're out on the reef, you can take those big, heavy sinkers off, and they're not, they're not going to be bashing against your rods and wrecking them. So. Just another bonus of those click sinkers. And once again today, you've seen that they worked. We've caught a great feed of fish, no worries. 
In fact, they might have even helped just being so uh, lightweight, the fish wouldn't feel them when they swam off with the bait. So yeah, check them out. The link will be in the description. Well, that brings us to the end of the session, guys. We had a great day and ended up with 20 legal whiting, which is two feeds for our family, even with those boats and jet skis going straight over our line. So I hope you had a bit of a giggle at that, but do take it as a lesson and you know, keep it in the back of your mind when you're out there on the water. Steer clear of other boats, whether they're driving, anchored, fishing, swimming, whatever. Just give people space and everyone will have a happy day. If you did enjoy the video and you took a couple of tips away, make sure you subscribe um, and leave a like rating. It really helps me out. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment, guys. I love chatting to you and answering your questions and I'll answer every single comment no matter what it is. And lastly, check out the link in the bio if you want to uh, check out the click sinkers. We've been using them out on the reef and uh, in the estuaries now for the first time and they worked a treat. I was really impressed. So we don't usually like to switch up our uh, traditional techniques that we've always used but um, to get that many fish on the click sinkers shows how well they really do work and I think they actually did make a little bit of a difference um, on a couple of those fussier fish throughout the session. So anyway, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go and check those out and just have a look at them. Until next time guys, tight lines and happy fishing. Hope you get out there and chase a few.